From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Friday, October 21st, 2022. Internet connectivity worldwide impacted by severed EU subsea cables. A major internet subsea fiber cable in the south of France was severed yesterday at 8.30 p.m. local time, causing connectivity problems in Europe, Asia and the United States, including data packet losses and increased website response latency. Repair crews moved quickly on the scene but had to wait for the police to collect evidence before they were allowed to work on repairing the damage. At the same time, another subsea cable linking the Shetland Islands to the Scottish mainland had been damaged, leaving netizens on the island isolated from the rest of the world. But regardless of this coincidental timing, this latter case has been confirmed to have been caused by a phishing trawler. Microsoft Blue Bleed, a customer data leak, claimed to be one of the largest in years. Microsoft has confirmed a data leak linked to a misconfigured server for a cloud storage service, but is disputing the extent of the problem. In a report released this week, threat intelligence firm SOC Radar revealed that the misconfigured server exposed sensitive data including proof of execution and statement of work documents, user information, product offers and orders, project details, PII and possibly intellectual property. SOC Radar says that its cloud security module monitors public buckets to detect exposed customer data and that six large public buckets contain information from more than 150,000 companies in 123 countries. The company is collectively referring to the leaks as Blue Bleed. Health system data breach due to Metapixel hits 3 million patients. Advocate Aurora Health, AAH, a 26-hospital healthcare system in Wisconsin and Illinois, is notifying its patients of a data breach that exposed the personal identification and data of 3 million patients. The incident was caused by the improper use of MetaPixel on AAH's websites, where patients log in and enter sensitive personal and medical information. MetaPixel is a JavaScript tracker that helps website operators understand how visitors interact with the site, helping them make targeted improvements. However, the tracker also sends sensitive data to Meta, that's Facebook, and is then shared with a massive network of marketers who target patients with advertisements that match their conditions. This privacy breach has taken the U.S. by storm as MetaPixel is used by many hospitals in the country, exposing millions of people to third parties and sparking class action lawsuits against the responsible organizations. Parler accidentally doxes VIP members while announcing Kanye's acquisition. The social media platform accidentally exposed the personal email addresses of some of its most elite members on Monday while making the announcement of the company's acquisition agreement with the artist formerly known as Kanye West. Parlor Top Brass sent out an email that CC'd a group of VIP members rather than BCCing them, resulting in the email addresses being shared amongst all of them, many of whom did not even know they were on the list. Although this does not rate highly as a data breach, it is another embarrassment for the platform which suffered an attack last year when hacktivists scraped all available public data on the platform and then uploaded it to the Internet Archive for safekeeping. Thanks to this week's episode's sponsor, SafeBase. The dreaded security review. It's important, but it can be a real pain. Endless emails, waiting for NDAs, dozens of PDFs, and those unwieldy questionnaires. I'm tired just reading that list. Luckily, there's a simple way to streamline the security review process. That's SafeBase. Our Smart Trust Center allows you to send one link to customers or prospects so they can easily get access to the security and compliance information they need. You can learn more at SafeBase.com. That's S-A-F-E-B-A-S-E dot com. Financial losses to synthetic identity-based fraud to double by 2024. Synthetic identities only exist as figments in a credit reporting bureau's records, but fraud from these identities is expected to rise from a reported $1.2 billion in 2020 to $2.48 billion by 2024 in the U.S., according to an analysis published Thursday by identity verification vendor Socure. The identities are usually based on a real person, but with a slight tweak to some piece of personally identifiable information, like a different date of birth or social security number. A fraudster can then use the identity for a wide array of purposes, including different types of loan applications and credit cards. Hacking Group updates Furball Android spyware to evade detection. 
A new version of the furball Android spyware has been found targeting Iranian citizens in mobile surveillance campaigns conducted by the domestic kitten hacking group, also known as APT-C50. The newest version was sampled and analyzed by ESET researchers who report that it has many similarities with earlier versions but now comes with obfuscation and command and control updates. This discovery confirms that Domestic Kitten is still ongoing in its sixth year, which further backs the hypothesis that the operators are tied to the Iranian regime, enjoying immunity from law enforcement. Furball is distributed via fake websites that are visual clones of real ones, where victims end up after direct messages, social media posts, emails, SMS, black SEO and SEO poisoning. Brazilian police arrest suspected member of Lapsus hacking group. The arrest was made as part of a new law enforcement effort dubbed Operation Dark Cloud that was launched in August of this year. Not much is known about the suspect other than the fact that the person could be a teenager. The Policia Federal said it commenced its investigation in December 2021 following an attack on websites under Brazil's Ministry of Health resulting in the alleged exfiltration of 50 terabytes of data and temporary unavailability of COVID-19 vaccination data of millions of citizens. Other federal government portals targeted by the Lapsus Group in Brazil include the Ministry of Economy, Comptroller General of the Union, and the Federal Highway Police. Texas sues Google for allegedly capturing biometric data of millions without consent. The lawsuit was announced by the state's Attorney General's office on Thursday. The complaint says that companies operating in Texas have been barred for more than a decade from collecting people's faces, voices, or other biometric data without advanced informed consent, yet Google, through products like Google Photos, Google Assistant, and Nest Hub Max, have, quote, since at least 2015, collected biometric data from innumerable Texans and used their faces and their voices to serve Google's commercial ends, end quote. The statement added, quote, every day Texans have become unwitting cash cows being milked by Google for profits, end quote. Remember, we've got a full slate of live content available later today from the CISO series. It kicks off at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific with Super Cyber Friday, where we'll be digging into hacking customer trust, an hour of critical thinking about what are the elements required to build a confident business relationship. Then at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, we go live with our Week in Review show. Give us 20 minutes and we'll get you caught up on the biggest headlines of the week with a healthy dose of commentary and perspective from one of our CISO guests. To join us for both, just go to CISOseries.com and click on our events page to register. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.